Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video and today a bit of a tribute really to Denny Lane who has passed away aged 79. Long term viewers of my channel will of course know what a big Wings fan I am. A few years ago I did do a Denny Lane retrospective video which is one of the most watched videos on my channel. I've certainly been, been a fan of, of Denny, mainly via his work with Wings for virtually my entire musical life really. The first proper pop record I ever bought was Mullet Kintyre. We can see this is not the original 45 I bought, obviously this is, uh, this is an import I got many many years later uh, from Germany, a 12 inch version. But um, you know the picture of Paul, Linda and Denny that's on the front of that um, particular single, it was on a poster that was inside this album London Town and um, that lived on my, I was going to say on my bedroom wall, but in fact it was, uh, I had it on the inside of my wardrobe. I had a sort of large wardrobe and the picture of Paul, Linda and Denny was uh, was taped to the inside um, of the wardrobe door. So whenever I opened the wardrobe to get my school uniform out, uh, there they were looking at me. Uh, they seemed like um, part of the family almost. And um, Denny Lane's song, Deliver Your Children, which is on... Um, London Town. That was a B-side to a single off this record. I can't remember if it was the B-side to I've Had Enough or maybe it was the B-side to With A Little Luck. I can't quite remember. But um, I loved that song. Still do to this day. Very haunting song by Denny. Song by Denny. And um, it would probably be in my, in my list of top five favourite Wings tracks. So um, I was lucky enough to meet Denny Lane. Quite a few years ago now he came and did a gig in my, well, sort of in my hometown, a few miles up the road, Morecambe, which is on the sea, on the western seafront here in uh, in Lancashire. He he played a gig. It was it was billed as an evening of music and stories by Denny Lane, and he didn't tell any stories all night during the performance. And uh, when I talked to him backstage afterwards, I said to him, "What you know? What happened to the stories?" And he said, "I'm really sorry, but my memory is just shot to pieces. I didn't put that on the publicity. That was put on there for me." Um, it was shortly after Paul and Denny had um, met up accidentally backstage at a UB40 concert. It was the first time they'd seen each other in, you know, literally decades. They'd had a bit of a falling out back in the early 80s. I don't want to go over the history of that. If you're watching this video, you probably know all about it. But um, it's nice to know that Paul and Denny did uh, make peace with each other, I think, in later years. Although I don't think Paul... Um, made particular efforts to renew the friendship properly, but um, again, you know, that's another story. Anyway, I thought just in tribute to Denny, it would be nice just to quickly run through his contributions to the Wings catalogue. Um, Wings is still not a band that gets its due, I think. I think, generally speaking, they are, of course, overshadowed uh, by the ghost of the Beatles, and uh, thanks to the Alan Partridge gag, um, Wings is the band the Beatles could have been. I think there's always a slight element of mockery around Wings, which is completely undeserved. I think they were they were a worthy band. Some of their material could be a little bit mixed, a bit unpredictable. That was largely thanks to the vagaries of Paul McCartney's uh, songwriting talent and the way he approached his post-Beatles career. But there's always some good material on Wings records. This is the first album, of course, Wildlife, which came out uh, in 1971. And um, there were no Denny vocals on this record. This was just all Paul and Linda really singing. A few, you know, a few backup vocals by Denny here and there, but he didn't. Um, he didn't come to the fore just yet. Denny was the second recruit to Wings. Really, it was Denny Sywell, the drummer, uh, who'd been on the uh, Ram sessions, was the first one in. And then Paul wanted, Paul wanted a guitarist, somebody that could hold down the rhythm guitar and who could also sing. Linda had been a big fan of the Moody Blues hit Go Now, which. Denny had sung obviously she was a big fan of that record and Paul knew Denny from the 60s uh, scene in London the club scene they were friends um, they'd first met years before and I think it was 1964 or something like that Denny's band Denny Lane and the Diplomats which featured Bev Bevan on drums um, had supported the Beatles um, in Birmingham so McCartney and Lane um, had known each other a long time and uh, I think Paul just thought that he would be a good foil, and uh, that's certainly the way it turned out. By the time we get to the second album, Red Rose Speedway, uh, it's unfortunate really that Denny's contributions were somewhat um, excised from this 
from this album, the song I Lie Around, which had been recorded by Paul as part of the Ram Sessions in 1970, he decided to bring it out again for this record and he gave uh, at least one of the verses to Denny to sing and Denny did a great job of that song. It's a great song, ended up as the B-side to the single Live and Let Die, but it didn't make the final cut of this record. Uh, this album was meant to be a double album, but that's not quite how it turned out. So that was one song that got away, although it did end up on the re-released double album version of the album, which came out many years later. There was also a Denny song that was meant to be on this record called I Would Only Smile, again, which is a really nice song, quite a bluesy little number, that one, but that one also didn't get on. Um, but despite that, there was some, there was some great uh, vocal interplay between Paul and Denny on this record. I'm thinking of the opening track, Big Barn Bed, which has some great vocals. One of the main things that Denny contributed to Wings over the years, apart from his occasional songwriting efforts and lead vocals, was the backing vocals and just the combination of Paul, Linda and Denny. It made a very beguiling and evocative sound, which uh, I would argue is one of the great vocal harmony teams of the 1970s, you know, up there with... I don't know, the Bee Gees and Jeff Lynne and Kelly Graucourt from ELO, you know, just great pop, great pop backing vocals, very radio friendly and um, quite underrated, I think. So it was the third album, Band on the Run, where Denny finally comes properly uh, into the foreground. So he wrote a song on this record called No Words, which McCartney um, added a section to. Great little collaboration between the two of them. I think it's a really sweet little song. It's on, it's on side two. Quite a short song, but it's got some lovely harmony vocals again. A lead vocal from Denny this time and some and some great guitar work. So, um, you know, this is a very famous album, a very well-known album, and uh, if Denny had never done anything else, really, in the 1970s, the fact that he's got a, a lead vocal on this album would be significant. Then on Venus and Mars, he takes a lead vocal on a Paul McCartney song uh, entitled Spirits of Ancient Egypt. Not really a favourite song of mine. I think Denny does a good job on the song, but I think... Um, for me, possibly the weakest song on the album. Lyrically, it doesn't really mean very much, but um, it is a good vocal performance. Denny, Denny sings his heart out on it, for what it's worth, but uh, maybe not a high, a high watermark for Paul Wings or Denny, really. Round about this time, there was another Denny song written uh, called Send Me The Heart, which was done in Nashville, I think, just prior to the recording of this record. And um, that one just got away. It was a Denny lead vocal, but it didn't end up being used on any of the albums. Wings at the Speed of Sound from 1976. This was the album where Paul really started to try to bring the other members of Wings to the foreground, so every member of the band gets a lead vocal on this record, even the drummer, Joe English. But Denny actually gets two tracks on this record. Uh, he sings the Paul song, The Notes You Never Wrote, which is the second song on side one, which I think is a fantastic moment. Um, there is a Paul vocal version of this song, which you can hear on YouTube. I think it's a great song, very evocative, uh, and Denny does a great job singing it. Um, I think the Paul version is decent, but I wouldn't be without the Denny version. So that's a really nice moment. And then on side two, he sings his own song, Time to Hide, which is a good solid rocker. I don't think it's anything too stellar, but I do think it's a, it's a quality piece of songwriting. In terms of how it sounds, it's almost sort of part two, really, to the song um, Letting Go on Venus and Mars. That's quite a similar kind of blues rock sound, and he does a great job of it. Um, can't show the record because I don't have it to hand, but we mustn't forget the Wings Over America triple live album, which immortalised Denny in several ways. Uh, for a start, there was his uh, version of Go Now, the Wings version of Go Now, which is which is on that album, and of course was um, featured in the uh, in the Wings Over the World uh, tour f film, which came out, which is a really great piece of footage of Denny. Really, Paul and Linda doing backing vocals to Denny's lead vocal. He's on the piano. He does a great job, and um, I guess also on that record, you've just got the enduring image of him with the twin the twin neck electric guitar. He did some great playing, some great, great singing on that tour. He took lead vocals on the Paul Simon song, Richard Corey, did a good version of that. And, um, you know, I think if you're, not, if you're not familiar with Wings and you're not familiar with Denny Lane's work, watching, watching the live Wings Over America concert video, that's a really good place to start. You get a real sense of how central Denny was to the whole Wings operation. He wasn't 
well, he was he was a side man, but he definitely brought a lot of himself to that role. And uh, in some ways, he he seemed almost quite centre stage, really, in that concert, as far as you could be centre stage with uh, with Paul McCartney stood next to you. London Town, I've already mentioned. So there's quite a few songwriting credits to Denny on this record, or co-write, should I say. There's actually five songs on this album which were um, co-written by um, Paul and Denny. Oh, hang on a minute. Have I got the poster in here to show you? I actually have got the poster in here. This is not the original poster which I had on my wall, but it is, it is a new version of it. So there we go. Um, and some quite nice pictures actually on the... Um, on this side of the poster too. There's quite a nice one of um, here we've got uh, Linda and Denny there with Denny featuring a bit of a 50s um, quiff there. Nice picture of him there too. London Town of course was recorded in the Mediterranean. I think it was in the Mediterranean on a, on a floating studio <laughs> for tax reasons no doubt. Um, so yeah let me just make sure I don't give you the incorrect information on this with the songwriting credits. So he takes, he takes two lead vocals on this record, on his own songs, um, Children, Children, which is a beautiful sort of folk, fairy style song. I've always loved it. It's very gentle, very unassuming. It was written in tribute to his kids, I think, at the time. There's Heidi, his daughter. I can't remember the other child's name. Deliver Your Children on side two, which I've already mentioned, which is one of my favourite wing songs. Very melancholy, very evocative, but with this very fast acoustic guitar strummed part and a great middle section where you hear um, Denny singing lead with um, Paul McCartney doing the backing vocals, which is quite interesting to hear. The title track, London Town, was a McCartney Lane contribution. Always loved that song. And then you've got two songs on side two, which Paul takes the lead on, which but which are co-write. Don't Let It Bring You Down, which is another beautiful folky kind of song. And then the absolutely crazy final track, Morse Moose and the Great Goose, at the end of the album, which was largely improvised, I think, by Paul and Denny uh, on deck of the boat that they were recording on. Denny plays piano and the whole thing uh, is just built up into this... I don't know what you'd describe it as really, just a freak out really, a big kind of rock, rock and roll freak out. Uh, Denny's vocals, I think he has some lead vocals on the middle section, on the sea shanty section. Um, but his fingerprints are all over this record and uh, I think it was, after Band on the Run, I think this is the record which you would listen to really to hear Denny's contributions. Back to the core three uh, lineup of Paul, Linda and Denny Lane. Denny was the only stalwart member, really, apart from Linda. All the various uh, lineup changes that went on through the years, Denny was the only person who stayed constant. Of course, we do need to mention again Mull of Gintyre, which Paul and Denny wrote together. Paul had the original idea for the song, I think he had the chorus. Denny uh, helped him write the verses. Legend has it that they wrote it together while walking uh, through the hills of Scotland, up near Paul's farm. Or maybe they drank, I think they drank a bottle of whiskey apparently and sat and uh, finished the song together. And Denny, of course, uh, was very prominent in the video, which was filmed, uh, filmed up in Scotland, walking along the beach with the McCartneys. <clears throat> so that just leaves the final record that Denny and Wings recorded, which was Back to the Egg. Where Denny's contribution was maybe maybe a bit more in the background on this album. He only had one song uh, on side one, which is again and again and again. It's a great video for the song as well. I think every song on this on this album got its own little promo video, but uh, the again and again and again video is good fun, and it was nice to see Denny taking uh, taking one final lead vocal uh, before Wings finally broke up. So, like I said uh, at the start of the video, um, the Paul and Denny story didn't have the happiest of endings. The partnership did dissolve and then they didn't see each other then for, you know, many, many years. But it's very nice to see that Paul has come out and uh, given a nice tribute to Denny. And um, it was nice to see that on the news this morning and to know that um, Denny's contribution has been acknowledged finally. Might have been nice if Paul had done it sooner. It would have been marvellous to have had Denny on stage again with Paul in more recent times, doing some of those, doing some of those old Great Wings classics. But it didn't seem like that was ever going to be uh, in the frame to happen. But uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure he was grateful for all those years, and uh, just what a fantastic thing to have done to have had that big hit with with Go Now, and then to move on to all those Wings records and all those huge world tours and 
all the friendship he had with McCartney. Uh, I think it must have been something that he looked back on with immense fondness. Anyway, that will do for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Rest in peace, Denny. We will miss you.